18 Jamaican herbs and spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah. I'm coast to coast representing. I'm mean, say this is right as representing for Omar. You don't know, come get your sports over here from near and far. Boy, 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 boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that mean me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over air. Come subscribe, repost, and share. I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that mean me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over air. Come subscribe, repost, and share. Yeah, if me not sure, that mean me not say it. No who score, that mean me not say it. Never know no game play, that mean me not say it. If me never seen a game, me no know who play. For your sports news, better come over your so. For your soccer news, then come over your so. If you don't love sports, they'll come over your so, for the day, don't you have a love over your son? So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or Argentina with these crapper players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment, let me know what your thoughts are. All right, greetings and welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I am your host, Omar Stennett. They call me Manning's Man, and it, it's my great pleasure to be with you again as we do one more interview with one of our past great players, excellent player who represented our national team and was a part of the 1998 World Cup campaign. I mean, doing well now in the States. I mean, has his coaching badges or license and, um, you know, has a deep, 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 deep and sincere desire to, to, to support the Jamaica football uh, program, to improve it at the grassroots level. We're going to speak to him about his years in football and also about his thoughts and improving, uh, improving just the game at a local level here in Jamaica and impacting the national team. You know him very well. Uh, before I introduce him, though, let me just remind you, to, to check out the sponsors for this video, Trick Nick, right? Trick Nick is a Jamaican-owned company that operates in Brampton, Canada. They use Jamaican herbs and they use Jamaican spices, right, to make all their products. They buy them here in Jamaica, take them to Canada, and they make all of these products for all your jerk need, right? So if you want to jerk pork, jerk chicken, jerk uh, fish, jerk whatever thing they sell, the most amazing jerks product, jerk marinade, jerk paste, jerks barbecue sauce, all of those things. And today, if you check them out, they'll give you a 25% discount on all your products. If you use the code, I am sure sports 001, you get a 25% discount. Thanks to all the persons who have already joined um, the stream. Thank you for joining. I see the coach's desk, coach Minzy, Tennessee Lewis, Lewis out of Tennessee, uh, Travis Peso, uh, Grimmy Football Production, and all the other persons who are on. Thank you for joining. Also seeing um, Ishmael King calling my original Arsenal jersey a knockoff, but uh, maybe I need to show him the, 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 the label. I'll, I'll keep reminding people that the third biggest team in England is Arsenal. Only two teams stands above us. Manchester United and Liverpool. All right. If you put Europe in there, obviously 
we're going to fall down the pecking order. Right? Fine. But in terms of in the domestic competition, only two clubs stand over the big mighty gunner. See? Fly Emirates, right? Uh, we have changed sponsorship, so one of these days I'm going to put on my new kit. But thank you, Alex Reed, for coming in. And um, I'm going to introduce our special guest this morning, uh, Mr. Paul Young. Mr. Young, how are you doing, sir? I'm great, man. How are you doing? I am doing well enough. I mean, um, I, I was afforded the opportunity to banter my Manchester United um, fans this weekend. I was very, I like when my team plays on a, on a Friday and wins because it gives me the whole weekend to troll and buzzer all the other fans. And so, um, you know, um, listen, before we even get into anything, seeing that you're a Manchester United fan, are you, are you one of those persons who want the coach to, to, to be removed? Do you blame the coach or you think a lot of it has to do with the players or it has to do with the board? Just, just drop that in there and then we will. A combination of both. combination of both. I think the coach um, is having some problems with the players, the star players themselves. They're not at the same page, so the results are up and down. That's all it is. There's, not a chemist, there's no chemistry there. As most of the pundits say, we have a bunch of players, but we just don't have a team. And I'll leave okay, it at so, that. So the coach is a problem and some of the players as well. The, the coach and the players and the entire manual <laughs> man, man organization. Okay, all right. That's I see all, Ryan, yeah. Yeah, man. I see Ryan LFC also from Liverpool. Big up on all topic TVs here. And uh, uh, Donovan Donor. I don't know if that is the right Donovan Donor. You know. If it is, we're supposed to be talking to the, the Donovan um, Donor who used to play for Boy Stone. Um, tomorrow in our interview. But, um, Sir Young, can you tell us about um, your roots in football in a, from a, in terms of a playing level all the way to representing Jamaica and, I mean, some of your successes at high school, college, um, league level, um, your debut for Jamaica, all of those, just give us the whole history um, so we can touch the past, then we talk about the present state of football and look at the future at, at the back end. Well, it really started for me um, at Ulmer's Boys School and then to Barbican. We played the minor league. That was 1985-1986. We won the minor league. That's a Kingston and Kasapa minor league. That's it. Uh, played by teams in the Kingston and St. Andrew area. And we won the minor league that year in 86. And from there, I went to Ulmer's. I mean, at the outstanding year in Mining Cup, 1986. Got a scholarship, I uh, went to Syracuse, and during that time, um, no, my, you have to tell us what the outstanding year, year in Money Cup was like. Did you win the title or you're the leading goal scorer? Did you have a lot of assists? Yeah. Who was the Wilmer's team? You can't just skip over if you okay. do that. The Will Marion will call you and cuss you out, say you come and big interview, and then even uh, call the names. So, you have okay. to give us a little bit. So, my league, my league, we won 86 as the MVP, and one of the leading scorers in the minor league for Wilmer's as well. In 86, I was the MVP, even though we got knocked out in the semi-final. I was the MVP. I was the captain of the All-Man in that year. And um, I was also one of the leading goal scorers that year in the Money Cup competition. Who were some, of the, who were some of the players that were, I mean, at Wilmers and in that all man team? Well, I was the only one from Wilmers that uh, made that all man team. But we had other players from Wilmers like Lawrence Arar, uh, Mark Chisholm. Better say, um, some also names that Woolmeyers are very, you know, familiar with. Um, I had some players that played with me, and you know, I like Peter Isaacs who went to Boystown as well and played okay. with me there. So, you know, that was a formidable combination there. Do you and Peter we, Isaacs played together? Yes. At Woolmeyers, I yes. didn't even know that. Whoa. Yes. yes. So, and you get, and you got knocked out. Yeah, we got knocked out. Um, our defense and well, overall, <laughs> you know, we just can't see the too many goals. I'm not, we're not able to outscore the other team, so we kind of struggled in the semi-final round. And then I went on to Syracuse University. Actually, I went to West Virginia Wesleyan for one year. I was the leading scorer there. That was at NAI school in West Virginia. I was the leading scorer there, and then I transferred to Syracuse University. I had to sit out one year because West Virginia would not release me. 
to play directly. So I had to sit up one year. Went to Syracuse. Um, was uh, all conference, all Big East. So was all American my final year. Um, and um, I ended up with about four, um, 30 goals in about three, three seasons there. So it wasn't so bad. After that, um, after Syracuse, I came back to Jamaica and played for Portmore. At that time, it was Hazard. We won right. the Premier League. Yeah, we won the Premier League. Then Linval Leaks uh, was yeah. one of the, you know, Anthony Corbett was our captain then. Gaddafi um, was on that team. Gaddafi was on that team. Robert yes. Dyke. Yeah, we had right that all those juvenile. Yes. We had, we had, yeah, we were on that. You know, we had a formidable team, and we won our first. Um, Gal Premier Galaxy League. was in the Premier League that time as well. Yeah, I think they probably came. Yes, they were probably in the Premier League that time. You know, Galaxy, we beaten stick that one. Well, oh, well. that was that must have been a big match at 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 Woodside to see Hazard yeah. versus Galaxy back in the day. Yeah, rivalry, rivalry. But we always tackle them. All this happened there. All this found a way to beat Galaxy. Really? Even when they had like Carl Bing and Wayne Palm and all of those guys? Carl Bing and was playing with us at um Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Wayne Palm was played at um I think probably at um Galaxy. Wayne Palm and um Walter Boy was there for a season or two. But I mean, that was then. And then I went to Charleston Battery, that was about 93. Same, you know, and I was playing. That was, it was a USL league. That was my first real. That was still a USL, or it was that was the same name. The, the USL. USISL, USISL. Okay. That was the first real sign of professional football that I played. I know I was playing for Hazard afterward, but it does that. It's like semi professional. And then from there, now, um, 93, 94, um, Portmore. Then I went in uh, 96, the Major League Soccer, it was the inaugural year, Major League Soccer. I was drafted by the Columbus School. Okay. At the same time, then um, Jamaica was involved in World Cup qualification for the 98. Yeah. So I had a little struggle with my coach in Columbus School because the qualifier is not like now when they have to release you to go play for your country. Back then, it, you, you were given a choice, either your country or the, the club. And oh. at that point in time, I had to choose I had chose, chosen to play for um, Jamaica to help qualify. Oh, and that is 1996? 1996. 1996. So you, started out at the, you started out with the team at the beginning of the qualifiers? We, yes, I was, I was, I've been playing for Jamaica. I was reach a little bit since 1987. At that time, I was still going to Woolmers. The captain on the team there was Howard Bell, was a good mentor to me. Howard Bell had Richie Murray, Anthony Carbett, Michael Tuller. Um, Dean Messi Wilmot. Which team was uh, this? The Jamaica National Cena team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. And that was 1987. That, that was my first call up. Um, oh, my in senior... 1987. Okay. Yes. That was uh, my first call up. It was myself, um, Altiman Butler, Freddie, as you know, um, yes. and Chris Dyer. So the only three youngsters that were called at that particular time to represent. And we got a good uh, exposure. I mean, Coaches at that time were Motti Scott for a period of time and was other coach there. Carl Brown was there afterwards, you know. So we got introduced at a young oh, age. Somebody, somebody just level. asked that. Somebody just asked who, who coached you at the national level. So it was Motti Scott and Carl Brown. Yeah, yes. Okay. So and so that was um, a long, long time ago. And, uh, you know, Juicy Bell kind of took me under his wings. And I think up to date is one of Jamaica's finest players ever. Everybody yeah, Howard Bell, Juicy Bell, so he kind of showed me ropes. And eventually, when uh, Simmons came in 94 or 95, when he came, uh, Juicy Bell was the manager of the national team. So that, that made it a little bit easier, the transition there. And just, you know, he always give me advice about playing this and playing where and things to do on the field, on and off the field. So, and then from there, I was 87 to 97. I played over um, 86 times for Jamaica. It wow! And so scored got, how many goals? I'm um, 28. So um, that's up to that time. So after yeah. after that, that's up to 97. 97, yes. And you scored 27 goals. 28. 28. Oh, yeah. Who did you score your first goal against? <laughs> you don't remember, well, it's all right. <laughs> no, man, I remember, man. No, I remember, man. But my first, my first goal 
at, well, I, I used to play the under 20, that was 1986, when we played Cuba. My first goal was against Cuba okay. at, a, at a, the junior level. But at the senior level, at the senior level, my first goal was against, I think, Canada. In a, okay. in a, in a friendly. In a friendly. All right. Yes. What was it? What I know, I, I hear from the players who were here locally how difficult things were in terms of representing Jamaica in the 80s and in the early 90s about accommodation. This is before Simois. Accommodation, payment, preparation, organization, though they were a very talented crop. Now, you were in the United States by this coming back to Jamaica. How was that? How was it any different for you? Um, or it, was it just as difficult or uncomfortable, um, you know, as some of them kind of share their story? You felt like, man, these were not the best conditions for you to be representing a national team in. What was yeah, but, that like for you? Yeah, the conditions were, were difficult, but at the end of the day, we had a vision. And, you know, when we went away and came back, you know, you tried to better yourself, but at least you don't forget where you're coming from. And, of course, you come back to some familiar conditions, so... It was easy to adjust and adapt, you know. As I said to most of the people that I know now, when I was playing for Jamaica, it's the most I've ever eaten stew chicken, breakfast, <laughs> lunch, and dinner. Right now, if you bring a plate of stew chicken in front of me, I'm not going to look at it because that that's what we could. The team was um Whoa. could afford at the time. The sponsors could only give us chicken every once in a blue moon. You would get some oxtail, but for the most part, stew chicken for breakfast lunch dinner wow so we had to make the transition and then you know eventually we were they got the players also the players you know accommodation which is okay i mean not the best but at least we that was where we bonded as players and that was the reason why we qualified for the world cup in 98 because the chemistry there you know, everybody had um, each other's back for the most part i would say 90 percent of them we had, we had each other's back and you know, okay. it reached a point in time we were playing, and we can tell you, if you have a game on Sunday, you know, we could party Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We find it reach Thursday, but they can't leave the camp. They can't go road. If you go road, okay. and we we'll find out that any player find out, like you will be in another place on the car, the coach are gonna know. That's how tight we were, and nobody tried to violate that. Every now and then, a little one man with the bottom line, but we had such a night and a, a tight chemistry there trust me sometimes we most of the game that we won in that qualifier we're not one on the field and it's what it was won by our rapport with each other and all we respected each other or we care for each other but so why people there. always have this i miss a young people always have this perception though that the players were in discipline and 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 and, and jamaica and, and the picture you're painting now is that when it came on to the national team and you as a group, you held each other accountable. But from the outside, many times you'd hear people say, well, the players weren't disciplined and, you know, um, was that your experience with the national team? No, no man, not, not all the players. You know, in every group, you're going to have one or two players who are going to try and will step out of line every now and then. But for the most part, the majority of the team was disciplined and uh, I think... Um, we stuck together, but you know, one and two players, you know, will we'll, we'll try to do things that are not um, expected and they get punished. And then, you know, if, you know, there's a one bad apple swallow, well, barrel, I say, yes. yeah, so, but it's not, it's but not the a whole true, bunch. Yeah, yeah, whole bunch. It's not a true yeah. perception. You know, we had some players that always give trouble, and even then, we still rose above that okay okay and what was training like because i've heard like i mean people told me how persons like winston angling in the early days how he trained very hard and how even coach whitmore the co coach whitmore now back in those days how he trained very hard how the players even walter boyd they said that when he came on to training walter boyd like most of the players what was that like i mean is that true or how intense were the training sessions yeah man. Um, I'm going to give you a few stories. So the training sessions were very intense. I will give you a few instances. Now, before every game, they, um, if you have, let's say you have a game on Sunday. You have, a, you have squad games, like 
from Thursday and Friday. And those games are more intense than the match that we're playing on Sunday. Because everybody wants to start. Okay. You understand? Okay. And how you perform in the squad games will determine if you're going to start in the game on Sunday. Yeah? And I'm going <laughs> to give you one joke. I know if Dean and Freddie them are listening or watching this, they'll <laughs> probably hear. We were training at, we were training at Mona Field, you know, and everybody know Mona is at dust ball. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. And we have a squad game on the Thursday morning, you know, we have a game Sunday. And I'm telling you, God rest him soul in peace. Charlie Malcolm was playing, and Charlie Malcolm was on the, the B team. <laughs> and that morning, Charlie wear a pegs. And I tell you, they feel tough. And Charlie, I'm on him pegs. And nobody <laughs> would go near Charlie. Everybody in tackle for run. And within about five minutes, he switched from the B team to the A team. <laughs> and Charlie, don't look back since. That day, that. that's how intense it was. Just I'll give you an example, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> but what happened? The intense was so good, but it was competitive, and we're not trying to kill the next player, try to hurt him. We just wanted, we just everybody wanted to start in the team, and everybody wanted to do whatever it you know takes legally to get in the team. So the rivalry was good, and the intensity was good. You know, yeah. the training session that um, when Simon was in the training sessions, um were very difficult and very, very challenging because, you know, the Brazilian philosophy is the philosophy that we kind of adopted when he came there. And contrary to what most people might think, Jamaica didn't have any system or any style or any play when time we had previous coaches. We were just playing most of the time of our raw talent, yeah, our uh, athleticism, you know, but we weren't yeah. taught certain intricacies of the game at that time. When Simos so came, Simos. Kind of, yeah. you know, Simos came, he kind of gave us a philosophy, try to, try to teach us how to believe in ourselves, he motivated us, and, you know, it's just the kind of way Brazil played, and, you know, we tried to emulate in the best way we could. Awesome. Well, let me just go back. We're going to come back to this, but let me just go back. You said that you had to make a choice between your club, and, I mean, just getting into a club, just getting there, and the national team. Now, you chose the national team. Did that have any impact in terms of your contract with Colorado Rapids? Um, because Colum yeah, but it's Columbus School, yes. Uh, my contract, Columbus School. Yeah, my contract was terminated because I Whoa. chose. Yeah, uh, the, the, coach, he, the coach said, listen, you have to choose between Jamaica or Columbus School because Columbus are paying salary. But I said, I said, Whoa. coach. And I said, the coach, the coach, listen, you don't get to play in the World Cup qualifying every year you know? You understand? Yeah. And this is my chance to play in the World Cup. And I'm not going to give that up for nothing. So he said, well, they made a oh, choice. Yeah. I said, well, yes, I made my choice. So you, you, you made a choice, represented Jamaica in the qualifiers, but never yes. made the final. Did, did, did you look back and regret, like, and kind of say, man, imagine I gave up my contract to represent this team, started in the process, and now they are going to the World Cup, and I'm not a part of the squad. And maybe you can tell us, how did you not make the squad, having been such an integral part of the build-up all the way, I mean, up to the time of qualification? Well, I mean, I mean, if I had to do it all over again, it's easy to say, yes, I probably wouldn't, but I probably would have because I love my country. And it, there's no greater feeling as an athlete or a sports person than you playing and the anthem is playing. And it's it. 20, 30,000 people they are standing to watch you play. That like, there's no better feeling than that as an international, as a sports personnel. You understand? So I love when I play. I remember my first game I asked, when I was playing, the anthem played, the tears come to my eye. And you look in the stand there, I say, people left, right, and center, they come for watch you. Not all of them, you know, but at least one man or two. <laughs> you understand? You can't let your, your fans. Yeah, but, but I mean, I, had to, I, I, I chose Jamaica at the time because I know that we we had the chance to qualify based on the, 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 the system that was in place. Because, you know, remember, um, Simosa came, I think, 94. I think yeah. he came in 94. You know, so he, he came and laid the foundation. He laid the platform for us. So I come and I believe in that system. I see the things that we had, and I said, yes, we have a chance. So I took the gambling and said, I'm going to be playing with the national team. 
depends on what happened in the national team, I could get another contract after, you know. So that's what happened then. But um, after you mentioned why I didn't go with, with the team to the World Cup, yes. Our, our last game in '97, we played Mexico in right. Jamaica, yeah, and we needed yeah, that's 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 it, that's the 16th of November. Yeah, and we needed just that time. We needed a draw to go through. Yeah. Yeah, I came on about maybe about two minutes left in the game. And right, they did come on in the game. I yeah. was here, yeah, I remember, yeah. And I remember when Simo was hugging me up and I said, boy, you know, you deserve this chance now. And I just look at him and say, yeah, man, anything you say, you deserve this chance. Anyway, so I went on to that game. So the following week, we had a friendly in Trinidad. And the reason why we had a friendly in Trinidad, because at that time, Captain Burrell and Jack Holler were good, good friends, good, good friends. And I think they had made an agreement. If we qualify, we were going to go to Trinidad to play a friendly game. Just so they could honor us. We could practice game down in Trinidad. Right? See, the following week after. So we the, the game was on Sunday. That is against Mexico. And we went to Trin, Trinidad. I think the Tuesday. And we played the game on the Saturday. Now, when we got to Trinidad, you know, remember, you know, these, these are players, yeah. You, you just get you just get the news that you qualify for the world qualify for the world cup yeah, yeah. everybody excited everybody, everybody excited. feel like they're going to yes. the world cup no yes, yes. you yes. rub me the hands together and say yes boy i can't wait so we got to Trinidad, and of course it's a friendly game nobody did take that game serious we just got to go enjoy ourselves you understand for, for, for the hard work we put in so apparently simo didn't like the mood of the, of the group so we had a meeting on the Saturday before the game on the Sunday. And he, he said, he, do, he said um, I don't like the, the attitude of the players because we came here and he's like, we're here to just um, have fun and not taking this game serious. And, you know, he doesn't, he, he wants us to take the game more serious because we have a World Cup coming up next year. And he's going to try and find the best players to represent Jamaica. To go to the World Cup because he's going to the World Cup to win the World Cup. That's what Simon said. And if, if you ask Dean or anyone in was here, they will say that. So when he said that in the room, you know, when he said, I'm going to the World Cup with the best Jamaican players to represent Jamaica yeah. because he's going to win the World Cup. So he's telling that to a, to a, a bunch of players or a group of players who just qualified the team last week. Yes. So when he said that and this and this and this let me just tell people this included Dean Burton, Paul Hall, and Fitzroy Simpson. Yes, they're all there. Yeah. yeah, those yeah, those guys are there. Those those four guys are there. Dean Burton, Paul uh Fitzroy, Fitzroy Robbie. Yeah. Robbie was there. Robbie was there. No, Robbie was no, wasn't there. All those three were there. So when he said that in the room, you know, the room was silent, you know, and I'm telling you, we're in a big like a conference table, I would sit around the table, and everybody was silent. Everybody was looking at the next person and say, no, What man, does this mean? Man. Yeah, what happened? I really said a while ago. So, so, and then when the room was so silent for about a minute or so, then Simo was get up and say, Well, if anybody have any questions, you know it's a good time. So, I said, Mr. Coach, yes, man, I have a question. <laughs> so, I said to him, I'm going to repeat exactly what I said to him. I said, Coach, because I know he do not speak English that well, but he, he understands English. Yeah. So I said, Coach, if I understand you clearly, you are saying to us players who have been here since 1994, who have made so much sacrifices for this country to get us to the World Cup, you're telling us now that we are not going to the World Cup? And he, and he looked and he said, yes. That's what I'm saying. Whoa. So when, when he said yes, so same time, Butler get up and said, so Coach, so what if the 22 players that are inside here say we, you know, we're gonna go to the world? I'm say, well, you guys can go, but I am not going with you. That's what Simon said in the room. Oh. And the next day, the meeting was finished right after that, you know. So when nobody said anything more, and all the delegates that were there in that meeting, Captain Boyle, um, Carl Brown, everybody that was the manager, everybody was there. When it, when yeah. when that meeting oh. was done. The play silent and will leave. So when they go outside, a couple of the English based players them said to me, say, Why, Paulie, 
Boy, I chew your talk, you know, fool system I talk, you know. I say, yeah, but the button doesn't say nothing inside there. Nobody said nothing. So the next day I played the game against Trinidad, two players were not in, we never addressed for that game there. It was me and Altiman Butler. Because Meaning I you inside. never changed not all the way it was a friend. No. Are you... no. And how many players went to the game? Um, 18, I think, or 20. 20 players. Okay. Yeah. And it's a friendly game and you guys never yeah. even change. Yeah. Yeah. And from there, I didn't represent Jamaica since then. Whoa. And so then, from, that, from that game yeah. in Trinidad, that friendly game, yes. even after the World Cup, you have never been called back for Jamaica. That was qualifying. No, that, 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 no, not, 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 no, no. Never. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So and, and you were the, I think you were the only two persons who were in the initial squad who actually never went to the World Cup. Yes, I think Dean eventually went and didn't need right. play. And I must Dean say that yeah, and then there say, were seven players, there were seven players that also brought. Yeah, 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 right, right. yeah. Because at that time I, I next year I moved to Tampa. I was playing in MLS, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. Yeah. Mutiny was playing MLS at the time. And I got a call from Carl Brown, Coach Carl Brown, I'm thinking about what about me or so? I say, we want to take as an alternate. And I say, Coach, no. Yeah, this oh, so you did that. get a call to go as an alternate? Yes, and I said, no. I said, I deserve more than that. But you know, the funniest thing about it. What I, about Altiba? Did he get a call to go as an alternate as well? I'm not, not sure. sure. Not okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, the funniest thing about it, uh, you know, besides Burton uh, and Simpson. Yes. A lot of those players there, when we were playing the qualifying rounds, they came to the games, you know, they fly down and come watch Jamaica, watch us play on the hard surfaces. And many but of them. Me, those players, meaning Robbie Earl and no, man. Marcus. Which yeah, players? all those players that were not, that I didn't call, most of them come and see the surface we were playing. Because them kind of stadium turf was like dirt and tough and right. hard. Yeah. They had a little grass there, but tough. And they say, hey, I'm not playing on this field and, and unless you qualify, oh. until you qualify. You oh, hear them say that, I need you to say it. So, let me, just, uh, just people I just need to clarify, make sure we're hearing and we get this right, right? Just allow me, Mr. Yo, right? So, what, yeah. what, what Paul Young is saying is that some of the players who ended, they, they ended up at the World Cup yes. came and watched some of the qualifying games. Yes, and said that they would not play unless the team qualifies because yes. the surface was too tough. Yes. Is that is that yes. what to make sure? Okay, yeah, okay. And you say you he, you heard that from them. Let me decide them and them that one. Whoa. So how did the other players in the team like? Because obviously, if you know the rest of the players in the team, no. How did those players? feel about sentiments like that and then to see some of these players now in the final squad and playing while some of them were alternates how did that are you don't are you you, you can't respond to that well all you have to do just ask some of the players that were at the world cup the jamaican players and how they and the english players uh interact during the world cup you know they were almost at war down there you, you don't know that no, no. Well, okay. I know that they got along the players and Paul Hall, Fitzroy Simpson, Dean Burton, to a great extent, they actually got along well because those guys were living at the camp. But at the World Cup, they almost, I didn't know that they was almost one. All right, you just, just check it out. Do your research. <laughs> okay. Yeah, do your research. Okay. Whoa. Because the English based players and the Jamaican based players were not seen eye to eye. And since we're on that topic, I do have a problem if you come from England and you want to represent yeah. Jamaica. I have a problem with that, you know. But well, you have to be better than what we have in Jamaica. That's my problem. You, know? you have to be better than what we have. You cannot be just the same. Of course, you can be more organized and more professional because you're in a professional environment. But I am saying I'll take my chances with the local base because at least you have the youngsters in Jamaica. You're giving them something to look forward to. If you look at the squad right now, how many players that play in the local league is in the, in the, in the squad? Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec, Mr. Young. Um, Travis Peso, I know you very well. And if you if you continue to make posts like that, I'm going to say it publicly. I'm going to block you from the comment section. There's nothing Mr. Young has said that suggests any division. 
And if you say that again, sir, in the comment section, respectfully, I'm going to block you from commenting. All right? Continue, Mr. Young. Yes, man. Wow. Yeah, yes. So yeah, you're well. saying that if they're coming, they must be better than what we have locally. Yes. If they're okay. same, if they're just at the same level, that that's that good enough. In my in my opinion, you know. You understand? Yeah. They're not superior, they should stay where they are. Because okay. you, I mean you cannot you cannot judge up and tell if they're committed or not. Yeah. So because I am not God, I don't know, but I can tell you, I mean. You have to give the local players them a chance. Okay. Because okay. you have a you have a youth now, 16, 17, 18 year old, and he's not so good enough um to get a scholarship, but he can play. He might can get a little um play for on it or waterhouse or above you, but still he, 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 he can't play in the national team because he not play overseas, I'm not playing in America, or because you know, there's certain little things that I think. We have to give the them longer yard some things to look forward to. You understand? Okay. And sometimes football may be their only way out. All right. So your point is, if if the players who are coming from wherever in the world, if they are not better than what you have locally, then it doesn't make sense. Which no. which I totally agree with. I yeah. mean, but I think what is happening, you know, which is what we want to get to, because you believe there is a problem why our local players, and as I've talked to most of the past players um they, they consistently say this when i hear you guys speak like even you in the college system how well you did we don't have players i think do as many players doing that now same thing locally the quality of football has declined um significantly compared to back in the days when you said there were the hazards and the galaxies and the black lions the last perfectos I mean, I guess because more of the talent was here, though the coaching, I don't think, was at such a high standard. Um, yeah, I want to know, right? Um, what is the problem why our local talent pool right now is so, to me, is, is so, for the most part, dismal. And so we have to rely more so on players outside of Jamaica. A uh, lot of things come to um come to mind. The environment for sure is the first thing. Um I don't think the the infrastructure is at the level where it should be in terms of a player going to training and the discipline to get there on time, to come to training and work. You at a club and you don't train and you still play. You know, the, the, that's the basic foundation in terms of the level, the attitude towards the game itself needs to be changed. Because I don't think we love the game, you know. We just love the hype of the game. A lot of the players there are not willing, even though these are the players that I want, you know, but I don't think they, they, there's a structure there for them to say, listen, this is the way, you know. Yeah. These are some of the things that you need to make it as a professional athlete. The attitude, the work ethic, dedication, and thing, and that. But the, the, the thing that we have is as soon as you see a player, shift a man or sell another man and say, I'm wicked and talented, and talent is just one of the few things that you need to make it an ISL. Talent is not at the top of the list. You understand? Plus, the attitude towards the game, or their coach, or their, the, or their the environment, you know, that tells them that they can not come to training on time can come to training late and still play yeah not work as hard and still play you know that's the mindset that's where I'm, the mindset i think is we're lacking oh for and the local then, players I, yeah for the local players and then to add to the, 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 the level of coaching that is being employed okay you understand like a little, those little things i just infrastructure and how, what you're coaching and you know, the technical aspect of the game, the tactical aspect of the game. Do we do any blackboard session? Do we review games? All them stuff we need to improve on as a nation. Yeah. As a footballing nation. Yeah. Because like I said, I, I think that the, 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 and the sentiment is in even the present construct of our team, there there has to be a high reliance on people playing outside of Jamaica because they the, the coaching 
um, arguments and the development, the, the football itself, like it, it, something is wrong with the football. There's no, right? there's no development going on. There's okay. no development going on in Jamaica. You see me see anything being developed in Jamaica in terms of football. In well, the, that is true, but, but let, me ask, let me ask you a next question. Are, do you see any 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 of the, the crop of players now that you think, I mean, maybe this player can get a look in? Um, because most of us, most of us believe the best talent now are some of the players who are presently playing in England, either in the Premier League or in the Championship, who are who who are Jamaican but just born in a different country. Are the Jamaicans who were born here and they're playing overseas, either in the USL or MLS or in other parts of Europe? So do, no. do you see anyone like you think, you know what, this one could have been looked at? You mean that I'm not playing right now? Yeah, that, that's you mean not like, in the... That I'm not called up? Yeah, or probably called up and maybe should get a chance. I don't, I don't know if you see anyone like that. Because most of us believe that there is not the, the, the pool of local players. Like it's it, like I said. I mean, who are you going to call? Well, well you're I'm a not, coach, I'm, so you may see differently. Sorry. No, yeah, but I'm watching. Well, the Premier League just concluded in Jamaica, based on um, well, probably about a month or so. But I mean, there's, I'm sure we have players there that are of equal talent, uh, equal um, level in terms of um, their technical attributes and skill. That can contribute, you know. We're spending all this money to get some players overseas, and we could use that money to try and develop some of the players that are there. Playing with well, like Harborview, uh, Portmore, or Arnett, or Waterhouse, you most can find two players down there. That is the, the coach can have a first hand view of to see and say, Well, okay, I can try and work with that player than getting players that you probably don't see that much, and you probably not, I mean. You don't know. Okay. What, you, yeah, go ahead. Because the, the, the question then is, all right, in, in this modern time, because you are a coach, and I, I want you to talk a little bit about that at the level that you work, but as a coach, if I don't think I have the best or as a football organization, if I don't have the, the best talent pool locally and there are other players outside, why wouldn't I get to know like you just said you don't know why wouldn't i get to know them or take the time to go and look at them develop a scouting network to see if they fit the system that we want to play why not take that approach um going forward that's a good question i don't know i mean i don't know the the, the jff ins and outs but i am not sure if if, they, if it's the head coach that selects the players that come from england I am not sure about that, based on what, what I say. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe he does or maybe he doesn't. But the fact that um, the players, I mean, I see how, how they, they play in the game and how they perform in the game and how, I mean, it's hard to judge, but I don't know if he's the coach that select those players that come in. You know? Okay. I don't know. I don't know if somebody over there see the players then. Eh? And say, yeah, that man I can play and bring him come. Rather than the coach see the player and say, yes, I want this player. I don't know if the coach go over there and talk to the player and say, listen, I, will, I see you. This is what I, I would like you to do. I don't know if that, that conversation ever happened or is, is happening at all for the players that come over from England. Okay. Okay. All right. You, you, you are in the States and you're coaching um, in academy. At what level and, and how important is that? to apply to a Jamaican context? What, um, based on the, how important is it to kind of apply the same principles um, at the level that you're at to develop the football locally? Um, how important is it to, to probably transfer some of those things right now? It's very important because I can tell you from U10, if you coach now U10, whether a boy or a girl, at that, at that age, you starting to teach them. You don't teach them 11 v 11 game. They start to play like a 7 v 7 game. And from 7 v 7, they move to 9 v 9. Then from 9 v 9, they go to 11 v 11. And because you're trying to break the game down to them, simple, before 
them reach 12 or 13. You understand? So in Jamaica right now, we have even our Pepsi or whatever, when they used to have it, it they play the MV11 and it, just to get used to the big field, but they have no idea what they're doing. I am saying we have to have a structure in, pl uh, in place or implemented, whereas we build them to play. For instance, the defenders, then, you have to teach them at a young age why you play the ball out from the defense to the midfield and why the keeper doesn't kick every ball up the field when you have a ball kick. Yeah, it's you want to play out of the back, play to the midfield. You understand? When they get older now, you teach them the different styles of pressing the game, um, whether they attacking to try and win the ball early or defending. It, it teaches them a lot of stuff. Yeah? But all this takes time. Yeah? But it's a philosophy that we need to implement at all, all levels. Yeah, so that our teams play similar, whether it's under 15, under 17, under 20, the senior team. But it has to start at the, the younger age level. So when the players then move from under 15 to under 17, there's an easier transition. From under 17 to under 20, the easier transition. From the under 20 to the national team, it's easier transition. But we have to start at the, the grassroots level, the younger levels. You know? yeah. what, what, what are your thoughts on the present national team um, in terms of the, the, the construct of it, in terms of the balance between the local and the overseas base, the coach's ability to manage um, players playing in different leagues, coming in with different systems? Because you just spoke about the necessity of a system from nine-year-old coming up and the all 15-year-old all playing the same system. Now we have a coach that has... A, a, a mixture of players, a, a player is playing in Egypt, some playing in USL, some playing in England. Um, I think probably two uh, playing locally. I mean, what are your thoughts on the team now? Because where we stand, the team just, it just doesn't seem like they're playing well um, as a unit. There seems to be a deep division um, in the eyes of the fans in terms of um, the perception of the local base players as it relates to the the English base players, though everyone is all Jamaican, and it, it you know it, it comes across sometimes that there's a management issue in terms of how do you, how how does the coach and the technical staff manage you know all of this to get the team playing not just winning games but just playing good football over a consistent period of time? The coach has a difficult job, you know, because if you have three or four players that play the championship in England, and you know the championship is, is a result-based league, yeah. yeah, they don't play football. They just try to get the ball up the field as quickly as possible. So if we have players that play in the championship or, or league one in England, and they come to Jamaica, we're not going to expect them to knock the ball around you know, and pass bomb bomb, you know. It's going to be get the ball forward as quickly as we can. And that's how the team has been playing. We don't possess the ball for long enough periods. And if you look at the, if, if they're supposed to run a stats on how Jamaica play possession wise, all of the teams that we play against, the possession percentage is more than we play. We don't keep the ball enough. We're always chasing the ball. And for some reason, in my opinion, we always look like we always have no time on the ball. And whether it's that it, part of that, it, all that's not the coach's um, responsibility. Some of the players are not technically equipped. I'm going to tell you that some of our, the first touch, um, we, we have few players on the team right now that can beat a player one-on-one. -on -one. Few. You understand? Know, how is that possible? How is that? I mean, are you playing at the highest level? And you cannot, and, and I'm talking attacking players. Yeah? Yeah. We don't see attacking players taking on people and running by them and getting the ball across or, you know, do a one-two. We're not doing that. I don't know why. So it goes back to, are we technical enough? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Overall, no. And that's why we're struggling to keep possession of the ball. That's why we look so scrappy. And that's why we only look like only when time we count and we can't score a goal. So okay, that's, not all, that's, all, yep. that's not all the coaches' um, fault when the players, the players are not technical enough. Some of the players, um, some of them. Yeah, that, but the, the thing is, but then somebody is going to say, but 
the, the coach calls the players. So why are, are the technical committee or the technical department call the players? Why are you calling players that don't have... I mean, you're a coach, Mr. Young, at, at the highest level. Are you going to call somebody who don't have the technical ability to play? Like, and, that like, go, and that goes back to one of my previous points. Is it the coach that is picking the players to come and play? Because I know the coach when he was playing is a very technical player, that touch player. You understand? Good close control, good first touch and thing. So does he go there and recruit the player himself? Or is somebody say, why coach, you know, the man they play over that and him wicked. And he's all right, bring him come. I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I get that. I get that. All right. So so that is it in terms of the um, but how much of the responsibility for where the team is at is I think earlier when we were talking about Manchester United, you kind of said the same thing, that part of it is a coach, some of it is the players. All right, how much of this is also um, on the coach and the kind of system that is deployed in the national team? Because Rene Simois had players, and I, I don't know what the technical skills were in comparison to these crapper players, but most of us, well, most onlookers will say that Ravel Morrison, as an example, is a very good player, good technical ability. Mikel Antonio, Leon Bailey, um, um, Leon Bailey is a good a, 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 a good player. Kemar Roof, they'll say, is a good player. Um, Kemar Taxi Lawrence, they'll say, is a good player. Um, so, in fact, many people probably go back and say, this, this crop of player is way more talented than, than, than 1998. So how much of it then is on the coach to, to get the best out of the players that he have that he has? Yeah, the coach has his responsibility, you know. And that is that's where the box stop, you know. As it says, whenever the team is not doing well, then we blame the coach. Whenever the team win, them say the player them great. So he has to take some responsibility there. But you know, if I were to compare the players that we have. Are we had to players that are there today? I mean, there's no comparison. We had, we had better players back then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You believe Please, 1998? You believe that yeah, 98 yeah. squad is better than this squad? Of course. Is there anybody in the back of the field that can can dictate the game like a Tati Brown or a Lindvall Dixon? Is anybody in the back and like a Pepe Goodison? They, they will yeah. tell you that. They will tell you. Well, people are going Ooh. to tell you that Ethan Pinnock and Liam Moore and yeah. Maria Pan Lowe are, are better defenders. And Lowe, That's what they will say. <laughs> oh, but Lowe, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna single out any player that no defensively, no man, there's no comparison. No comparison. Okay. What about in midfield? Because when you think about Leon Bailey, Ravel Morrison, um uh, how many games how many games Ravel Morrison played for Jamaica? Uh, I think it, um he played a friendly game and um he played in the qualifier. At the stadium for 45 minutes so just just 45 minutes in terms of official game for jamaica did he have an impact on the game no he was substituted he, he was substituted. okay well in yes, the game so... he did play good i think in the game in saudi arabia he was really um moving the ball around in the game that we won mm -hmm. in saudi arabia in the friendly match he really he looked well um in that game at least yeah yeah well, I mean, I think, I think, my opinion, because you know we made different opinion, but that's right. But, but uh, my my uh, definition of looking well is how much you contribute to the to the team's performance. Yeah. So if you're a midfielder, you you're, you're creating chances or you're you're scoring, yeah, yeah. And we could even argue about Leon Bailey, and I know we know Leon Bailey is a good player, but yeah. what has he done for Jamaica? Okay. In terms of internal expectations, I am not knocking the NBL. The NBL is a baller, but what has he done for Jamaica? Okay, okay, okay. So, you know so what, 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 what you're saying is that the 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 issue has he, is has, what has, he, has, he, has yeah. he impressed you as a Jamaican player when he okay. plays for Jamaica? Right, that is the point. That's a very I'm good asking, point. I'm asking you. No, I'm man, that's a very you. good question. I'm saying has that. He I'm, has he been no, impressed? No, no. No, exactly. he has not been impressive. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll be fair. He can be the campaign, but, but when he plays for Jamaica, yeah. it's, it's a different story. Yeah. It's a, ball, it's a different story. So, but I mean, 
I don't know why he's not performing the way he should when he plays for Jamaica. I, I can't answer that. Yeah, yeah. But talent-wise, man, I mean, I mean, even Paul Hall, when he was playing with, with us, I mean, he's one of the few players that score. Every squad game he score when he came to train for Jamaica. And them man, they pay them own money and come play for Jamaica. Every squad game he played. Dean Burn just came as a, as a little virgin for power. He really, he really came to, did come to Jamaica to play ball. You know? I mean, seriously. Right, uh, yeah, that's his story, right. Yeah, I'm just come from home. And then Paul said, no man, come, come, and need you. And you know, the rest is history. They did well when they came. Fitzroy was well too. They did really well. Yeah, but in this, like I said, and this is the thing, you know, some of the players in this squad, because Mikel Antonio, for example, is doing well for West Ham in the Premier League. And people are saying that, how come that form is not translated to the national team? Um, you look at, well, Kemar Roof seemed to be finding his way. Um, um, we, we haven't seen enough of Terry McGee um, playing, but... but you know, so there's a mixed sentiment. For example, people think like Junior, some people say Junior Fleming is not good enough. There's an next part of Jamaica that says, well, but 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 Bobby Reed has not been performing as well. Um, so so there is this there's this conflict amongst the people, like um, uh, where I think some people look, well, if a man is playing in the biggest league, he is the better player, right? And what I think one of the things you have said is that what have you done for Jamaica? Because playing in the biggest league doesn't necessarily translate to, to playing well in the Jamaican jersey. And I think that is the point you're making about Leon Bailey. Though he's, he has played well and he's a big baller, that has not necessarily translated to Jamaica, at least yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right. I, I, someone is asking, and people, I'm not ignoring your comments. We, we, I want to give uh, Mr. Young the opportunity to speak and declare and all that he's saying, and then I'll come to your question. So what are your thoughts on the, 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 the federation management of this present World Cup campaign and the coaches management of the team? <laughs> As far as the federation, I will not comment on that. Because okay. I, well, I could say one thing. I don't think the football has been developed in Jamaica. And in that story, based on the leadership of the federation, I don't think the the, the, the Jamaican football public is getting justice. There's no development in football, D despite COVID and this and that. There's still no development going on. Um, as I said, the coach has his work cut out. I mean, I know he believes in the players that he has, so we just have to just support him all the way through. Okay, okay, and as past players, because. Again, a lot of persons look on and they say, listen, um, some of the past players sound like they are more astute in terms of the coaching. Why, why, why isn't there this reaching out to speak to coach with more when things are seen in the game to see if we can get the team looking more cohesive? I, I listen to some of you speak and the truth is that it sounds like you guys could offer something to football in Jamaica, but it just don't seem to be happening. It, it seems like all well, of these well, great footballing minds that are Jamaican all over the world, including some of the past players, including the Fitzroy Simpson. Uh, I mean, Paul Hall is in the program. You have like Joby McAnuff, Wes Harding. All of these guys are involved in football, but none of them seem to be getting an opportunity at any level to share that knowledge to local football to make it better? Well, personally speaking, you know, I could say that, I mean, I, you know, I played topper for a while and of course, he, you know, as a coach like himself, you probably wonder why he probably not reach out to you and call, but sometimes everybody's different because I know I can always learn. I can learn from every coach. I can learn from a coach where I coach some little six-year-old. I could learn something. You understand? But it all goes back to your mindset and the personality and how welcoming you are for um, suggestions or, or intervention in trying to help. And some people may not see it as help. They, they, may, they may see it as a threat. So, I mean, yeah. it's very difficult. 
it's very difficult. Everybody is different. Every coach is different. Similar in styles are what, but different. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a, a couple of the comments um, so you can respond um, as best as you can. Uh, um, so no, people are coming. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's a question that someone has. His name is Wayne Swear. So persons who have questions for Mr. Young, I mean, um, you can you can put them in and then I'll just put them on the screen. Um, it says. Paul, Paul Young, if football is not being developed in Jamaica, why should we push local players that are not technically developed, a suspect, into the national team? If football is not being developed, how then can you put a local player into the national team if they are not technically developed? That's a great question, Anna, but the bottom line is, you know, when you leave high school and him don't have 10 subjects and him have a little ability, we had to spend us with. Show him where because the, 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 the football is not developed. We have to get the proper coaches in the system at the young level to develop these players. And of course, you can argue, say, yeah, we, we not have enough developed local players because football is not being developed. But we still have some players that are technically sound that are in Jamaica. Yeah? If we have 10, maybe two or three are technically sound. So I still think there's hope. Even though the football not mean develop, you know, we have played. I mean, come on now. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mark Chambers is saying, asking, why why our forwards have to do so much work off the ball and Tapa only choose those types of forward? I mean, <laughs> and the forwards are going to work that much because we do not possess the ball. We cannot keep the ball. So they're going to be chasing all day. Based on how we play, they don't even get that time to rest. I see Corey work and when he was playing and Shamari calls the chase. By the time they get the ball after so much work, they're tired because we do not keep the ball. There's no resting time for them during the game, and a rest is a part of the game, you know. So that answers my question. They they, they, they chase too much um, because we don't have the quality of players there to keep possession of the ball to give them time not to chase as much. Okay, so so you don't believe? Okay, so. Uh... So we don't have the quality up, and this is this is the issue. Like, how how at a national level, we can have a national team that don't have the, the ability to keep the ball. This is this is like this is pr problematic for football. If at the national level we can't possess the ball, like it has to be fixed. I can't. This is it is not sustainable. To play football and not have the ability to keep the ball. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why I have to chase. That's why our forwards get tired. Okay. We All don't right. play the, um, we, we don't play the ball out of the back to start with. So every time the keeper kick the ball up the field, that's a 50-50 ball. When we do keep try to play the ball out of the back, which is like one out of every 50 time. Um, we lose it after five passes or six. So, the, the, this, yeah. the, I mean, the philosophy is different. Okay, but what about what um what about the person? I think someone is also saying this about oh. using the players in because right now we don't have local players fully developed technically to be in the national team. So for this cycle of the World Cup, we have a greater amount of players playing. In England, Jamaicans who could represent. Why not then not look to some of these players who already have some of these technical abilities to kind of build the team around? And then at the same hand, the federation begins to start at the eight, the nine-year-old age group to develop those players so that in 14 years, because th this is you know 1998 to now is, is what 23 years. Yes. <laughs> And we have come full circle. Mm -hmm. Back at square one. Back at square one. So, yeah. why, should, the, why, why? Go ahead. Yeah, the players that you said that are probably superior <coughs> technically to the players that we have that are playing now. Why are they not excelling? Why? Are we, why are they not dominating? And that goes back to my one of my initial points. If they're not far superior, I know. I will take what we have over them. Because if you're technically better and you're still not excelling, you're still not dominating a game, 
as how you should. If you're playing in the Premiership and you're playing in the Championship and you come as Jamaica, you're not dumb. You don't have an impact on the game. Not dumb. You don't have that dummy. You don't have an impact on the game. And why bother? Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to come up to some more comment because what Winsor is saying, we have the players to keep the ball, but there's no system of playing the team. So he's saying that if there was a system of play, you'd see the people possessing the ball. Now you're a coach. What do you say to that? We have the players to keep the ball, but there is no system to play in the team. Meaning, so, if I don't know, if I don't know, like if I don't know when I get the ball, what what option A is, option B is. If 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 that is not a part of the system that the team play, what do I do when I get the ball? Who is there a style of play? I don't know if you call it style of play, a system of play. I think yeah, that is what win. Yeah, but what the system don't make the players and the players they make the system, you know. And the players then yeah. play the style. The system, no, the system can't play ball. And the player then play ball. Yeah. System. Yeah. I mean, what do you define as system? Yeah. You, know, what you, you explain. Play? You you explain that to yeah. us. What 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 is this? When people say system of play, what is that? System of play is is what the coach or the staff has in place and as to how the team will play when the ball is in a certain area of the field. Whether it's in the defensive third, in the midfield third, or the attacking third. Yeah? The style of play is how you apply that philosophy as to how you want to play. For instance, if you're a team that's a counter-attacking -attack, -attack team, you probably want to defend from the halfway line and allow the team to possess their ball in their half and nearly come on the counter. If you're a team that wants to be a pressing team then it's a totally different ball game so we are trying to win the ball early and as soon as we win the ball we try to go forward and try to score so it all depends on the, the, the players that you have okay so in your club in yeah. your club who determines the system that the players are uh, who determines <laughs> how the players play the technical director Oh, the technical director. Okay. And the staff, okay. yeah. So we said, all right, my, my club, we play a 4-3-3. Okay? okay? And it depends on who we're playing against. We get probably have a two-hole in midfielder or one attacking midfielder. Okay. Or we can have, you understand? But yeah. always have three forwards, a left winger, a center forward, and a right winger. And based on how we play, we try, we always encourage attacking players. 1v1 situation, you have to run at the defense. You understand? There's certain um, trigger points I'm giving you. In the midfield, you want to do one and two touch combination plays in the midfield. You understand? In the back, we try to build out at the back, try to play to the midfield as much as we can. If we can't go to the midfield, we get the ball into the striker. You understand? All those, we have some little phrase that we use, and you know, that is just generalized, and that's how we play. Wherever we go, whichever team we are playing against, we're not change it. Yeah, we're gonna play out at the back, we're gonna play to the midfield, we're gonna play to the forward. Unless there's a team you know that they are very, very good, we probably sit back, take the pressure, and lick them on the counter. But you have, it, has, it all has to do with the person that you have at your disposal. Okay, all right, great. Um, Neil Sovereign says, How did Simoes get the English based player style of play to? cohere with the Jamaican style of play leading up to the qualify qualification. Meaning, how did a Burton, Paul Hall, Fitzroy Simpson, based on how they were playing in England, come into a Jamaican team where we like to hold on to the ball and take on players and they play direct? How, how was Simoes able to do that? Because maybe that needs to be clearly stated so that it can be applied in the context now. And it goes back to one of my initial points is that we had a chemistry and they had to stay at the players' house with us. You understand? So yeah, they have, they have to learn the way. And then, but the thing is that 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 we're not able to do that now because everybody's professional now. So you won't have. A, how is that going to work? Seeing that the players really can't, they can't live in a house again. They just turn up three days before the game. How 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 would you suggest that they do it then? That's what I would say. That's what I would say. The local based players is the is the answer. Not all of them, you know. 
Because at least they're there. Yeah. Okay. And that's all to build the chemistry. You need chemistry. And that's why Liverpool is so good. That's why Man City is so good. Chemistry. Chemistry. They must have chemistry. There's a difference between chemistry and a, and a group and a, and a bunch of good players. It's better to have the chemistry and our average players than no chemistry with a bunch of great players. Okay. Okay. All right. You want to expound on that? Because people will tell you if you get if you get if you get um Mbappe Neymar and um Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi in one side, they, they are good enough to get you the results. Yeah, but if, if them not talk each other, I think they're in a game. Oh well, you well. Okay. You think if they're not talking to them in a game? They will not win okay. one game. But but well, that is true. But that means that there and again it comes back down to who leads the team. There must be a management. You cannot have a team where players are not talking to each other, are not communicating and understanding each other. Okay. And and that needs to be dealt with. Um okay. yeah, I think um I, I see Mr. Devon Porter. Um you probably know him, he's out there saying that you, you, you play a low block and half half block and then and then counter um right uh let me just take a couple more comments because i know that you're a very yeah. busy man and you have the academy that yeah, you have to five deal with. more minutes all right so um uh let me take cc's comment he says paul do you think tapa has any system or style of play do you believe that this coach can manage the team <laughs> oh boy In our honesty, I don't think we have any system or style of play, but the coach has got results over the years and has done a, based on his record, has done an extremely good job. Based on his record, as compared to other previous coaches, he has done great in terms of his results that he has gotten. Okay. Uh, and then a uh, uh, profound ministry also asking, do you think the coach has a profound profit? proficiency to bring out the best from the players in the team and i think i was saying that earlier that if a player is playing in the top league in england one of the leading goal scorers how can he not get even a shot at goal representing jamaica for for almost 70 minutes is it you know can it you know yes, so, so, I, I, yeah. I cannot answer that question because i don't know how what kind of rapport the, the coach has with the players? Because some coaches, I'm just speaking in general now, some coaches will sit and talk to the players individually, 1v1, just to talk to them, nothing about football, just to get in their heads. I don't to have a relationship with those players. I, I, I mean, I know that some of them, you've probably seen them for the first time. I don't know if he talks to them. So I cannot comment on, you know, if he can bring out the best in these players, I don't know if he uh, if he communicates with them. I don't know. I don't know. I hope he does communicate with them, but I am too far away to have a, a, a comment on that or a, a, a proper answer to that question. All right. Um. So I I I think you know me supporter. So I'm going to take one from but one from this. Do you? This one said. Do you think they're, they? which is a JPL now, is good enough to produce top players for Jamaica. Do you believe the local league is is good well, enough in its local... Let me say this way. Do you believe local football in its present structure is good enough to produce players for the national team to get us qualified for World Cups? In the, in the present structure, no. But okay. back then... In back then, remember, you know, Albus Powell um all the man they used to play in Jamaica before them play MLS, you know. All okay. of them used to play local football for them to play MLS. Chamar Nicholson used to play for Boys Town. Corey Burke used to play for River Port, or wherever. All of them man they used to play in Jamaica. And the Premier League them start. You understand? Yeah. But as I said, the structure right now is not where it should be. So that's why I mean with the COVID and everything else, it's very, very difficult. But I think there are ways that we can, you know, we can do stuff to try and make it more feasible for the, the players to improve. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mr. Porter is saying, you are right. Paul, you are right. 
But what the Jamaica coach need to do is to get the players in classroom and have a walkthrough and a style of play and then train it on the field. You have 14 games, um, I think, from beginning um, to end because I don't, I, don't, I don't think we have 14 left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think we have about nine games left. About nine. nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. we, have, we have a lot of chance. I mean, mm. we have nine games. So. so, do you have any plans of coming back to Jamaica or working with Jamaican um, to, to help with the development of football? That's the final question for you. And then we will release you to go. People, please, I ask you to hit the like button. Um, right after this stream, we're going to be talking to Daniel Coped Ricketts. Um, he's a coach out there at Wadada. And you know that they have been having some issues um with entering into the jpl um because mobile united has been given the space and so he's going to come and just explain all of that from beginning to end right after we finish with um with mr paul young and so the final question to you sir is uh what are your thoughts on coming back to jamaica or helping with the development of football in jamaica is there a a, a way that you can do that um or is there a way you're planning on doing that? You know, like giving. I would love to come back to Jamaica right now if I could come back to Jamaica and work and help out with you because I think I can help. I mean, based on, you know, my experience and seeing how the system works over here, I can implement some of those ideas as to how we develop the younger players, you know, to teach them the game the proper way, try and teach them the right attitude, how to love the game. You know, try to incorporate do some good habits for them, you know, at a younger age. So when they get 15 and 16 and 17, I mean, the coaches have less problems. But I think that's where we, 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 we lose um, our goal. When, you know, when they get like 16, 17, the, the, as I said, the Austin gone through the gate already. Yeah. But so, I'm willing, so have, I'm really, willing I really have, to come up have, have you called the federation and told them that listen, if you need me, I'm just a phone call away in the same way I can call you. And I I'm want to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Up until, up until recently I applied for the under 17 team. Okay. I sent in a resume and they have not responded to me. Whoa. Whoa. All right, people. There, there you have it. Um you know, um, I want to thank Mr. Paul Young, one of the persons who were part of the early part of the 1998 campaign, um, had a stellar career here in Jamaica, um, scored 27 goals, 28 goals for the national team. He's in the United States now where he worked as a coach. You heard it. He applied for the, the under-17 job. I hope that um, at least contact will be made and interviews will be done. Uh, because they, said they received the email, that's it. Oh, they received it. <laughs> yeah, they received it. No I, think that, no cool it's I think that is going to take a next interview to go through um, <laughs> <laughs> all, of, all, of, all of that. But we want to thank you for your time. I know you have work and continue doing what you're doing. You understand me? Um, I know sometimes some of the people may not agree with all your sentiments, but it is good for persons to, to hear. Where That's fine, are. man. That's fine. We're yeah, not going to agree on everything. Yeah. Yeah, we can't, right? And so, yeah. um, again, thank you so, so much for taking the time to speak with us. You will, the video is available, so I'll send it to you so you can rewatch it and, and see yourself. And then that time, you will see all the comments, right? And then if you want to respond to any particular one, you can, you can do that. And, um, and then I will, I will send it to the person so they can see your response because there are many 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 comments that i'm very sure you can take the time to go through we have an next okay. woman here and here also bigging you up so yeah, he's a big up, big up. Yeah. Call, call <laughs> there you go all right thanks again enjoy the rest of your day yeah, um, you're welcome. You. all right all right. It. all right there you have it people that was uh paul young right um former national footballer now works as a coach over there in the United States, um, in the New York and in the Georgia area, uh, operates an academy that is doing very, very well. In the next 20 minutes from now, we'll be talking to uh, uh, Ricketts, uh, 
Daniel Ricketts, they call him Cuphead, former Cornwall College player, national player, and what other player? And he's a person who runs uh, uh, what other, you know, what other had some serious, serious issues um, with, you know, with the JFF and Mobile United being given the spot. We want to hear from the person itself. So I want to give him the opportunity to, to talk to Jamaica about from his perspective, all that took place. And then you can make a determination. Yeah, we must always hear all sides of the story. So, um, listen, you're going to come off this stream. All right. And then we're going we're gonna to send out a new link and then you're going to join that stream because that is going to be a very, very revealing discussion. And so before you leave this stream, please hit the like button, people. Don't go without hitting the like button. Um, hit the like button. If you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your love and your support. And then later this evening at four, we'll be talking to Denden Hutchinson, a player from in the 70s and early 80s. And I mean, he, is, he serves as part of the Past Players Association. And so good things coming up today. Um, so stick and stay with us, uh, people. Stay safe. Um, let me just give you a few words from our sponsors, uh, Tricknick. Remember, this video is sponsored by Tricknick. Tricknick is a Jamaican-based and owned comp Jamaican owned company that operates in Canada. They use Jamaican herbs and spices to make all their products. If you use the code uh, I am sure sports 001, you get 25% discount on all their products. They have an excellent uh, excellent, 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 excellent uh, shipping price for you, and they ship worldwide. So go and check them out. Tell them you heard about them from I Am Sure Sports. And um, just to give you a taste of what they do here, we go. making herbs and spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah. I'm coach to coach representing. I mean, I said this is right, just representing for Omar. You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Boy, 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 boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that mean me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over here. Come subscribe, repost and share. I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that mean me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over here. Come subscribe, repost and share. Yeah, share. If me not sure, that mean me not say it. No who score, that mean me not say it. Never know no game play, that mean me not say it. If me never seen a game, me not know who play. For your sports news, better come over your son. For your soccer news, then come over your son. If you don't love sports, they'll come over your for the day, don't you want to love over your son? So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil, no Argentina with these crap of players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment, let me know what your thoughts are.